So hello and welcome to this presentation on building web forms, building forms in Drupal using a web form. Now I was caught up on Tuesday afternoon to present this presentation because somebody has pulled out. So I'm trying to condense an hour long presentation, which I've done before into half an hour. So I do hope I, I do my best, but if there are any questions at the end, just come and find me, I will be around. So let's get started. So just a bit about myself. My name is Ivan uh, Jugetz. I've been a Drupal developer, professional Drupal developer for about 15 years. And I actually looked at my uh, Drupal.org profile, which, is, which has been a member now for 17 years and five months, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, so the agenda for this session, and we're not gonna have that much slides because this is pretty much just a live demo. So there are a few slides just for now. So the agenda will be, I will give you a quick, quick introduction into uh, a web form. We're, we'll create a form. We'll look at how to attach fields to it, how to add uh, conditional logic, how to add a confirmation step, view submissions, and then finally, how to embed the form into pages. So if you have used any type of form builder, I wanna try and cover every aspect of just using a general form builder, which is creating it, managing fields, adding in conditional logic, adding in steps. I probably should have even put how to add in pages as well because every form needs a bunch of pages. So with that, let's just uh, jump right in. So for people who don't know, web form is a module for Drupal.org uh, for your Drupal site, and you can access it by going to uh, Drupal.org slash project slash web form. And it is one of the few modules, in my opinion, that is an actual product. And what I mean by that is you install it and you get something out of the box. A lot of the modules now in Drupal are kind of frameworks or libraries where you install it, but then you need to build stuff on top of it, or you need to need to implement views, for example, which is great. But if you're new to Drupal and you just want to build a form, well, you can now just use this. And I've heard some great stories on people using web form to build all sorts of um, powerful form systems. So as I mentioned, if you want to uh, check out the page, the project page is very detailed as you can see. And to install it, I'm not gonna install it because I've already installed it on my local site. You just scroll all the way down to the bottom, grab the composer command, and oh, there's a big project page as you can see. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and of course grab the latest uh, project um, composer command and install that. Another uh, word of advice is you want to have the token module installed, but if you're but if you have a decent sized Drupal site, you should have the token module already installed. So here is my vanilla Drupal site, and all I'm going to do now is just go ahead and install it. So if I search for uh, web form you will see a, a lot of modules. You can see that a lot of functionality has been separated out into separate modules. So you don't have to install everything. And I do recommend that you just stick to uh, web form. And if we scroll down, web form UI, because a web form UI just gives you a UI and interface to manage it. But as you can see, there are a lot of uh, sub modules that give you extra functionality. And then you can, have a play with the actual web form demo uh, modules, which give you out of the box functionality, which you can then go ahead and um, play whichever way you want. And if we scroll further down, you have a few deprecated modules. Once you've installed everything, you go ahead and click on install. Give it a few seconds and it will go ahead and install. Now the UI for web form can be pretty full on especially if this is the first time you are using a web form. But to access uh, all of this, all you need to do is go to structure, scroll down, and you should see web forms. And if you click on here, you will see, let me just close that. You will see a default form down on the bottom. You can, you can delete it, you can do whatever you want with it. It's, just, it's as simple as clicking down here and clicking on delete. But if we scroll up, you will see a bunch of options up the top here. So under submissions, you see the actual, you can, you can access all of your submission data. So anyone who has filled out a form, 
the information will go here. And we'll cover this later on. But for now, just understand that's where you can get it. Then options, this is this is actually a, a, a great feature of our web form. It actually ships with a bunch of standard options such as days, months, time zones, uh, industry, phone type. And this actually makes it easy to reuse select options or checkbox um, options. So if you do have a use case where you have 20 odd forms with the standard set of lists or options, you can create your own options list and then you can make that change once and have a canonical list and then it will automatically be changed across all your forms. Then under configuration, we have the configuration for all of web form. I'm not gonna go through every single page because as you can see, there is a lot and this is just the first page. If we scroll back up, we have elements, submissions, handlers, variants, export, libraries, and so on, okay? There is a lot there. Under advanced, this is where you, oh, sorry, under add-ons, this is where you can see all of the available add-ons. And if I expand all of this, you will see that there are a lot of other third-party contributed modules. And if you keep scrolling down, there is a lot here. Some of them, are slight, you know, not well maintained. Other ones are well maintained. So mileage may vary. So I do recommend that you have a look at it. But if there is some piece of functionality that Webform is missing, come to the add-on page and there's a good chance a module already exists for that. So I do recommend that if this is the first time you are looking at Webform, have a look at the um, modules and just have a play with it. Okay. So now let's go ahead and actually build out a custom form. Now to do that, you want to be logged into your Drupal site and then just click on web form. And then here you just create the title of your form. Pretty simple. I'll call this one contact us. If I can actually spell that correctly. There we go. And then click on save. Then we get redirected to the elements page. Now the concept of elements is just Think of it as a field. For some reason, Webform calls them elements, but we can think of them as fields. If you click on elements, you can see all of the available element types, checkbox, text area, text field, but then you have advanced ones such as autocomplete, color, email confirmation, email multi, mapping. Then you have all sorts of other ones uh, which aren't just fields, but they actually offer certain type of functionality. There's a lot here. You can even control layouts as well. Uh, you can even control markup and pretty much anything that gets added to a form is an element. So let's scroll back up and create our first uh, element. So the first one we're gonna do, this being a contact us form, we'll put in a first name. So let's put in a text area. And then, let me do that again, click on text field and click on text area. Then on the, on the right hand side, we get a little, uh, a little bit of um, a few tabs and I'll call this one, what will we call this one first? Name, and I'll call this one also first name as key. And then up the top here, you have a few items, okay? You can control the conditions, you can add in advanced, uh, options and also you can control the access. Now this is advanced stuff. I don't want to cover it too much because I could honestly do probably another three or four presentations on this. Um, but if you do have to uh, um, have full control over access, you can do so from here. So here we've set the key, set the title. Let's make it required and then click on save. I'll probably have to zoom this out a little bit so I've got more space. There we go. Now, the next field we're gonna add in is a text area. So this one you can see here. And we'll call this one project details. And you can see here now the key is getting added in because I think if, if it was zoomed in too much, it, um, it just displays it. And let's make that one required as well. And you can also put in a required message if you like. So at, at this point, if we go to view, we can see a working form, pretty simple. All we've done is add in a text area and a text field. 
we have all of these tabs that we can jump back into certain parts of the form. So if we click on build, it will take us back to this build page. Let's now put in a drop down because forms always use drop downs. I'll search for select, then I'll click on the first select item. I'll do that again for some reason, it's not. There we go. And this one I will call tech technology, okay? And I'll call this one as well, what? Technology. And below here, we can put in our options. So let me just chuck in a few options and I'll give it WordPress, why not, okay? And scroll down and click on save. So now we have a select box. If we save the elements, jump back here, click on test. Now test is a great feature. It just pre-populates the fields for you. It's a great way to test out and you can see a drop down. We can take things one step further. If we go to build and there is another fancy element which I absolutely love and that is select other. Now what does that do? If I put in a title of say hosting and let's put in a few hosting providers. So I'll call this one Google Cloud. And we scroll all the way down and, and, and hit save. And then we go and test out the form. We get our drop down, but, but then we also get other. And this allows you to just add in another option that isn't part of the drop down. I've actually used this feature a lot. I remember back in the day a client asking for this type of functionality out of a standard Drupal form and there was a lot of custom code involved, but this is a but this is one of those great um, elements where you can select from a drop down and if it's not available, you can just chuck in some other option and that is a very powerful element type. And now let's look at rearranging the form because sometimes forms build, well the whole point of a form is to build it out and they get pretty large. And, and, and what I want to show you is just how to organize the layouts of the form. So instead of every form element being on a single row, we can kind of float them nicely and next to each other. And I'll create a last name field. So again, to do that, you click on build and let me just click on add element. I will chuck in text area and I'll call this one last name and make it required. And then this time I'll click on add layout. And from a technical standpoint, it just adds a Flexbox CSS, um, just adds a bit of C C uh, CSS to it. But to organize your fields, all you need to do is move this element up, pop first name and last name below, hit save. And now if we go back and test it out, we should see our forms, our two first name and last name fields have been popped uh, next to each other. And you can just see that without writing any custom code or any CSS, we have we are starting to build out a pretty decent form. Uh, so, so you can really see the power of web form, especially giving it to editors. They can manage everything through the Drupal backend and you don't have to pay for an extra SaaS subscription because there's one thing that happens there's one thing I've noticed in the last couple of years, the price of SASA application doubles every couple of years. That's pretty much what happens. All right, let's now put in another select item. And I'm also keeping track of the time as well because we're pretty much halfway. And what I'll do is I'll add in another select. And this time I'll call this one industry. And let's use one of the pre-existing options. So this one is just industry. And what it's going to do is it'll populate the actual drop down using the options from a predefined options list. So as I mentioned earlier, let's imagine we have 20 odd forms and all and all of them are using this industry drop down and you want to make a change and rename manufacturing and operations to just manufacturing. Instead of going through 20 odd forms and manually modifying that, you can just come to one option section and just change it once. 
and that's it. So that's the power of using those predefined options. So at this point, we have a pretty much we have a pretty decent size form, and then if we click here and click submit, we have submitted it, and that's it. Now, a form builder is not complete without the ability to add in conditional logic, because that's where I know I've spent many hours or many weeks actually defining the con defining logic and all and all of these custom conditions, when this field is selected, this appears, when this field is not selected, make this required and things like that. Web form has support for conditional logic. So let's go back to build. And what I wanna do, well, before we do that, let's add in a bit of logic so that if you select Drupal, you will get a version element text, uh, text field appear below. And also it will be required. Now to do that, we first of all need to create the text field. So I'll click on add and I will select text field. Let's call this one version and let's just make it required. So at this point we have a field in there, but we need to now add in the actual logic. So you wanna go and edit the field, then go to conditions and let me, Pull this out a bit so it's a bit more easier to see. Then the state should be visible. And these options, because we're only dealing with one log, uh, with, with, uh, with one parent, we don't need to worry about this. Then we, then we want to select our technology and value is, and that's going to be the option. So we have put in the current logic, which is visible if all of the following is met. The technology, um, the, techno the technology dropdown has a value of Drupal. So we can scroll down and hit save. And let's move this up the top, where is it? Just below version, click on save elements. And now if we go to view, I'll go to view so we can actually see it in action. We can fill in our form. And then if we come along in here, and select Drupal, we get the version dropdown and it is required. If we select the other option, it automatically appears, uh, sorry, it automatically disappears. And Webform is smart enough to, to actually not ask for that field because we did set it as required. So it is smart enough to know that if it's not visible, well then it is not required. But if we come back and fill out the form and select Drupal, we need to fill in that form right there. So the conditional logic or the con or the conditional system in WordPress is pretty powerful. Uh, sorry, not WordPress. Um, web form is pretty powerful. So it does take a bit of time getting used to, especially if this is the first time you are using it. But um, as you saw, it's very quick and easy to just add in a little bit of uh, uh, logic in there to build out any type of custom workflow. Now, the next thing I want to show you is to ha is how to create pages. Because this form is simple, there's not really that many elements, but I've seen forms with oh, 20, 30 odd elements. And from a, from a usability standpoint, it's not that exciting to see a form with you know, 50 odd elements in there. So it's sometimes good to just break it up into separate pages. Now to create the pages, again, you come back into build, click on this add page, and then you wanna define all of your separate pages. So I'll quickly go ahead and define contact. And 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 how you how you break down your pages is really up to you, but I'll break it down into three. The next one will be, uh, Project and the last one will be tech. And so all we need to do is move these stuff up. So let's move this up. So contact and then anything that you want to appear under that page, you just need to indent it below that page element. So again, with, uh, with tech, I will move that up. And then I'll move, well, let's, let's just move these ones and we'll move them all up together. 
because we can do that. So we can move these ones up and then simply select that and pop them up. And then finally, down the bottom here, we can add those in and pop them in. There we go, done. And, and that's it, now you've created um, a form and it's broken out into separate pages. Come along in here and you get these nice little uh, in progress. Yes, that can be styled a bit, but that's all just front end work. And then you click on next and you can go ahead and just fill it out. And then finally hit submit and you're done. Now, when you do have multiple pages, another great feature to have is a preview step. So your users can preview what they are submitting before it gets submitted. Because chances are, you're gonna have a lot of elements. Now to do that, all you need to do is go into settings and you can see here, every form has its own set of options. And all you need to do is scroll down here, click on form and scroll all the way down to the bottom and you should see a form preview settings. You can make an optional, you can make a required. Let's make a required. Scroll down and click on save. And then come back up the top. And if we quickly go through this again, now you get a preview. You can preview your submission and then finally click on submit. And it's a nice quick way to just preview your content. Now we are quickly running out of time, so I am gonna to have to go through this quickly. Uh, when you have multiple pages, a common, a common thing to do is, act, is, is actually to uh, track users through the funnel. And I don't know if you can see that up the top, but the URL all the way up the top here doesn't really change when you go through the different pages. So you will see here it is webform slash contact us slash test. If we go back, it stays the same. So it actually makes it very difficult for us to use any type of analytics tool to see when people are dropping off the form. Now, luckily for us, Webform has an option. So if we come in here, come into forms and then scroll down, there is an option all the way down here to track the users. So it will use uh, the page key and then add it in as a get parameter. So you can then easily use any type of analytics tool and just track them with the actual URL. So if we come along in here with test, you can come along and when you click on next, you will see that you get now the key up the top here. And this is a great way to, yeah, just track them. And you could write a bit of JavaScript code if you're inclined to do that and create custom events and track also which page they're on by pushing in custom events. So, well, we are running out of time very quickly. Let me just quickly go through submissions. If you click on results here, you will see all of the available submissions because there's no point of having a form and not having actual submissions. Uh, this is also another great feature of, of um, web form because you can export your data. So you can download it as a CSV. You can clear your submission data. Another great thing you can do, if we go back, you can control what appears in this table. Because you can imagine if you have 30 odd elements, this table is going to be massive. So you can come along in here and customize it and see all of the available uh, columns and you can chuck those columns in. And if you want, you can go ahead, click on edit and you can export. Well, you can, you can, you can view the submission and then if you click on view, you can view it as HTML, as a table format, as a plain text. And also if you are integrating with other systems, you can export it out. Of course, this will require custom code, but you can export it out into a YAML format and then push your information into other, other systems. Now, the final thing I wanna show you before we finish up is embedding the form into different parts of Drupal because Yes, we do have a single page. So if we go back and we go back all the way, we do have this page here, but chances are you may want to embed it into other places. So a common, a, a common way of embedding forms is through the block system. So you can come along in here, click on um, place, click on block layout, 
and let's add it to the sidebar. Straight away, if you search for web form, you will get a web form block. You can click on place block. You can then search for your form and then just place it in. And now you're going to have a web form just automatically up here in the sidebar. So if we go to the homepage, you'll see straight away here, it's in the sidebar. Of course, it is kind of squashed in. So you may not want to have this type of form embedded directly in the sidebar, but if you fill it out and hit next, you can, you'll see everything. It is kind of, as I mentioned, squashed in, but you can have it in there and it will automatically be embedded in. Now, one thing to be aware of is if you go to results, you will see, well, let's go to an actual page because I do have an actual page right here. So if we fill out, so if we're on a test article and let's imagine you have a sign up letter form and you wanna see where everyone is coming from, you can have them fill out the form at this step and then they can preview it, they can submit everything, and it's been submitted. And if you click on results, in the submitted to column, you can actually see where the submission came from. And this is actually pretty important because if you do have a page with X number of articles and you notice that, well, people are signing up um, to our newsletter, from one particular article, most of the time, that's that's a good way to gauge how well your articles are running. So, so, so if the submitted to is empty, it means that they have submitted it uh, on the actual form page, uh, because that means that they have submitted on the form page. Okay, the final the the final thing I'll show you is one of the most common requests I get is how to change the buttons. Uh, so you can easily do that by coming down here and clicking on customization and you can go ahead and modify the submit button, CSS, styling, uh, label. You can update the update um, button, the wizard, previous and next button. There's a lot here you can, you can modify the, 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 actual, the actual preview buttons as well and the previous and next button of the preview button. So Web form allows you to modify a lot and very rarely do you need to write custom code to kind of uh, put in like form alters, um, especially for the developers out there uh, because web form allows you to customize a lot. And, and, if you, and if you have to create a custom element, well, there are plugins that you can do to implement all of that yourselves. Okay, I think I've got one more minute to go and I think that is it. So thank you very much. That is it. And do you have any questions? Oh, I've got a few questions. Good, good, good. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Hi, Hi, thank you for showing us what web forms can do. So I have a question, like if we have a list of checkboxes and if we click one checkbox, then I need to show a plain text. That's a conditional logic tick. Can I achieve the same thing with the one you show us? Like when you click on a select and then it show the text box. Oh, just, uh, just any type of like text? Mm -hmm. Yes, so all that is, is that would be, uh, you would create, there are HTML elements. So I think it's just HTML. Yeah. Basic so HTML. Basic. Okay. And you can just add in any type of markup. Right. And that's it. And then here again, you can just come along here and set the same logic. So, so every single element, um, can be conditionally displayed and the element can be a bit of HTML. It can be, um, a bit of text or anything else. So once you understand this conditional system, you can apply it to any type of element. Cool, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Uh, just uh, can we use reCAPTCHA or anything to secure our forms? Uh, yes, you can. So if you come under forms, add-ons, well, let me collapse all these. I believe it's in 
enhancements or spam protection. These are the recommended ones. So you do have antibot, yeah, capture, recapture, honeypot. Um, one thing I have noticed is that I do believe recapture now, they're going to start charging for it because I know that, that at um, work that we will move it away from them. But you want to also test out caching because I don't know if this has changed, but a couple a year or two ago, I think when you used recapture on forms, it, it automatically turned off Drupal's caching. And you may not notice it if you just put recapture at the footer on every single page, and then all of a sudden caching's turned off. So you just want to test that out. Um, it's uh, recapture doesn't stop absolutely everything, but you can utilize a few of these options um, to actually stop yeah from spam bots getting in. But I do believe also having like a multi page form and all that will kind of slow things down, but you won't be able to eliminate it fully. You're always going to get something coming through, but there are, there are options there. Yes. Yes. Uh, have you tried to implement some sort of quiz uh, functionality using web forms, like a multiple choice and you show, uh, yeah, you did it yeah. or not? Um, I believe there are examples. Um, I have it myself. Uh, most of my work has been around actually making all this stuff kind of headless where we use a uh, web form. What is it? Rest. If you want to create like a headless form and then push it into web form. Um, that's another thing that web, web form is great for. But if you come here, I do believe right down at the bottom, there are quiz types. Oh, no, where, where was it? I believe there are certain elements. If I scroll up, scroll up. No, oh, maybe I was looking at it in a different place. I think it's maybe there is a module for that. <laughs> yeah, there's probably a module for that. Um, but maybe there is quiz. No, okay, no. Well, the answer is no. I haven't. Uh, I do. I do remember there used to be a quiz Drupal uh, module just called Quiz. But yeah, but I'm sure it, it it can be done. But you can imagine with the logic. Yeah, there will be a bit of logic in there and. You could implement quiz functionality, but then you'll but then you have to think of all the different permutations of what the form's going to look like, and then yeah, things can get a bit hectic around that. There's one over there. It's not really a question. That you said there's no point having a form without submissions. I actually did one a couple of weeks ago and it was a form without submissions, sort of what she was saying over there. We used it for a contact form, but it was a contact form for phone numbers and help links. So you, you choose what kind of help you want. It gave you a couple of links, all with the conditional logic and markup fields, just turned off the submit button and it, it worked perfectly and it made the marketing lady very happy. Okay, yeah, you can do that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... That's an option. That's not really using it as a form builder, I guess. It's just using just the conditional logic to uh, display things, which can be done with a bit of, uh, well, again, yeah, could be done with, yeah, absolutely. It can be done with yeah, JavaScript or anything like that. So, yes. All right, thank you.